query more than you, than you store, or do you store more than you query? And also, what is the frequency of you know, reading and writing? So you know, data management is actually a very, probably one of the hottest um, areas in cloud computing right now. There's a lot of software out there trying to uh, help you ha manage your data in different ways, all dependent on you know, how you actually access your data. Um, these are just some of the uh, packages that are available. So Hadoop, for example, Hadoop has HDFS, right? Uh, UIC, that's the University of Illinois, Chicago. They have something called SphereFS. Nokia has something called uh, DiscoFS. Um, DDFS, Disco, something FS. And then, you know, Facebook released Cassandra, which is now part of Apache. There's MongoDB, and there's CouchDB, which is also part of Apache. Um, Oracle has MySQL, because they bought out MySQL. Um, PostgreSQL is, um, I think, an independent company. And then DreamHost uh, released Ceph, which is actually just integrated into Linux itself. So, you know, each one of those provides various different functionalities. We won't get much into it because I don't have that much time. Um, but feel free to ask questions about it later. Okay, so the next thing, once you've decided on a data management strategy, you have to look at what your uh, MapReduce strategy is, right? So I think most people here in here know what MapReduce is, but we'll go in and just overview it a little bit. Uh, so it allows you to split and parallelize a task into many parts. Right? And final, and once you've computed the individual parts, it allows you to com combine the results back um, for a final result. So this image up here is supposed to show at the very left is your input, and that's, you know, it ha it's a large file which then has five parts that you split using a map. And then, you know, there's a center thing which is your shuffle sort, or whatever it is, your algorithm that computes the small one, and then finally a reduce that combines those results together into your output. So open source offerings. Um, these are really the three main ones. I think everyone here knows Hadoop. Uh, UIC produces Sphere, um, which, uh, which complements their file system that I mentioned earlier. Uh, Nokia produces Disco, uh, which complements their file system that I mentioned earlier. OK, so now we have um, workflow management. Um, workflow management is the design, specification, and coordinate execution of your compute tasks. So you can imagine that, you know, with MapReduce, it, all it does, it says you have one job to compute and it splits it up and recombines it. But then what happens if you have to do stuff before that MapReduce job or what do you have to do stuff after that MapReduce job, right? In which case, uh, what you want to use is something like a workflow management. And here, you know, it's a quick draw of a diagram, for example, you know, you have job one up there, and after it executes, you execute the other two, but then, you know, it has to hold, uh, after that, the right one finishes, you have to execute another one, you know, before you can actually finish the jobs. Um, and then, of course, each one of these themselves can be MapReduce jobs. So, uh, some open source offerings. Um, Yahoo has one, something called Uzi. Uh, they just released Uzi um, end of June, so that's about a month and a half ago. Uh, Apache, uh, along with Hadoop, also releases something called Pig, but that's really more of a structured query language. And then Concurrent uh, releases something called uh, Cascading that also sits on top of Hadoop. By the way, yeah, Uzi is also uh, just, you know, allows you to manage your Hadoop jobs. Um, LinkedIn has something called Azkaban. Uh, and they also, you know, Ask, they also use Hadoop, so Azkaban also sits on top of um, Hadoop. And then you have Palmsets, so I'm going to plug this one here because this is my company's. Um, so uh, Palmsets does, more, does Hadoop, but it also does non-Hadoop jobs, including um, Python, shell scripts, and uh, just, you know, anything that you can run on the command line, Palmsets will be able to do. We also uh, do a GUI. We also have a GUI, which the other four don't have. And, um, and Palm Sets is open source. So please go check it out. OK, so um, the other thing that you need in your uh, platform is a way for all your different nodes to really communicate with each other uh, easily. And that's a unified uh, framework for messaging. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it sits on top of the network and um, the, the hardware and network protocol layers. Um, and that way, it allows you to, uh, for your application to not have to worry about parsing of raw binary data and just, you know, take messages themselves. 
handle discrete messages. So some uh, of the offerings out there include Cupid, which is released by Apache, um, RabbitMQ. So this is actually so RabbitMQ is actually owned by Rabbit Technologies, which is owned by Spring Source, which is owned by ultimately by VMware. It was very hard to figure that one out, but uh, it's a very big company behind them. So th these things are all pretty stable. And then ZeroMQ uh, is developed by Imatics. Um, within Nefocity ourselves, we actually use ZeroMQ. It, you can uh, download the source, um, compile it, and be up and running in less than five minutes. So it's for us, it was really easy to use. Okay, so cluster management. Cluster management sort of sits outside of infrastructure and platform in that it's really, and also outside of SaaS, the, the software as a service, because it, it, people really don't think about it until they really need to scale their cloud. And what cluster management really does, it allows you to monitor the health of your cloud and, and so it sort of sits outside your cloud, it looks at it, and it sort of does things as you need when, when you need it. So what are some, uh, uh, ooh, okay, so cluster management generally includes stuff like configuration management, um, and then there's also visualization uh, and, at, and, uh, and reporting, which you know, we also call analytics. So first we'll talk about configuration management. So configuration management allows you to configure your running cloud instances. Earlier we talked about um, machine images. So if you want to uh, save off a particular configuration, you can actually create machine images to do so. But if you want to dynamically change your running instances, you need something like configuration management that can automatically go across all your cloud instances and make those changes. Um, and the reason you would want configuration management instead of machine images would be something like software upgrades, right? You, don't, you want to have zero downtime, so while you're, upgrade, while you're running your cloud, you want to go through and you want to upgrade the machines as they are running. Um, the other thing is you want, there may be dynamic configurations that cannot be stored on OS images. For example, a lot of servers, um, of database systems required, you know, the, the, at least the centralized ones, they need to know uh, who their master is, and a lot of times you won't know what that master is until you have the master running. So you can't actually uh, save off the master information until you've actually started up the master. So you need something like configuration management. Um, and then also, you know, there's storage constraints, right? A, a OS image actually takes hundreds of megabytes, if not gigabytes, and you may not always want to be saving off, you know, gigabytes of data just because you want a small change to happen. In that case, you know, use something like configuration management. Um, open source offerings for configuration management include Chef, which is owned by uh, Opscode, uh, Puppet, which is owned by Puppet Labs, and MIT, uh, I was just at MIT last week, and they, they cre they've also created a really easy to use one called uh, Star Cluster. Um, I think Puppet is actually a star, well, Puppet and Chef, at least, they're, all, they're both startups. And for example, Puppet is actually doing really well. They just got $5 million funding the other day. OK, so analytics. Uh, ooh, the left picture didn't come out too well. So analytics allows you to uh, capture information about the health of your cloud. And then visualization allows you to visualize that. And then once you have that information, uh, it allows you, you know, the so their software that allows you to adjust the size of your cloud or the configuration of your cloud based upon those, that information. So, you know, the data you can collect, for example, it's just, you know, you could be compute load or network storage, but it could be, I mean, network usage or compute load. It could also be uh, memory usage. It could also be, uh, file, you know, database usage, a lot of different things. Um, and then dynamic load balancing allows you to start up new instances and tear them down. Okay, so some open source offerings. Uh, you have Graphite, which is dis uh, developed by Orbitz. Orbitz is an online travel agency in the United States. I don't think they're, they're in Taiwan yet. Um, but allows, they're the, if in here, which did, doesn't show up too well, they have all the graphs on the left side and allows you to graph anything you want in real time. Uh, even if you have you know, thousands of servers sending it data and I think it uses one of the messaging pro uh, programs I mentioned earlier. And then 
you have Scalar, which is allows does the load balancing for your cloud. So it will watch your cloud for you know, and given certain metrics, like if you have ten machines and those ten machines are have all over ninety percent CPU load, it will start up another instance for you. And then there's nodules and ganglia, which allow, which actually is what you put onto your running instances, so that they will do the reporting of your uh, of the health of that particular instance. So, um, yeah, that's it. It's a very quick overview of what software is available out there for uh, creating your own public cloud, private cloud. Um, does anyone have questions? Since I already asked one question. Okay, so Palm says 